Right, so we're going to do something a little bit different today. Um, I've got my servos, but I need to extend the servo lead, so I'll just run you through a little bit of soldering. A lot of people are uh, a little bit hesitant or wary of soldering. You shouldn't be. It's pretty straightforward. I'll run you through some basics, and um, here we go from there. So soldering, you need a soldering iron, a roller solder, and some heat shrink. I use a 60 watt iron, um, just because it helps out when I'm doing some of the bigger stuff. So, you know, if you're doing um, the XT90s, I um, need a little bit more heat. Um, but this one actually has adjustable temperatures, so I can turn it down. I can turn it down to be a 30 watt, but I generally just run it at 60 watt. You might notice a little bit dirty. When they get a little bit dirty, um, you just need something wet to kind of wipe all that stuff off. Um, a sponge is ideal, a damp sponge. If you don't have that, you can use a rag or even just like a wet bit of paper and you'll see all the junk's coming off and it's nice and shiny good to go right oh clean as we go so something i hate is when you open up the back of something and someone has basically got two wires and just wound them together and left them like that. It's lazy. A little bit of heat on the soldering iron for a second. Just hit it up with the solder. You'll notice I'm trying to actually touch the solder on the metal I'm trying to solder together and not the soldering iron. Soldering iron will melt solder all day. But if you're not melting solder into what you're trying to solder, then yeah, it's not going to be as good. And if you have a look at that, it's melted in really nicely. That's not coming apart in a hurry. And then um, all you need to do, the heat shrink over the end, uh, use either the soldering iron um, or a heat gun. A heat gun is not a hair dryer. You can't dry your hair with a heat gun, you'll burn your head. Uh, they're generally about 400 degrees. So yeah, just be careful of that. So that's the basics, you know, warm up when you want to solder on the iron, just hit it with a little bit of solder and you'll see it melt into it. You'll know straight away. You need to make sure your soldering iron's hot enough. If it's not hot enough, it's not going to work. You just end up with blobby bits of solder everywhere and yeah, it's not going to join together. It's not going to be a good join. So let's move on to the task at hand today. And I want to extend some servo leads so that I can Put them in the wings of the A10. First things first, make sure the extension you're doing is actually going to be long enough. I have my new servo, it's not long enough. I have um, a piece off a servo that died. Um, I've already made sure that the colour coding is correct. Um, and all I need to do is cut that off, don't need it. Get a little bit of extra length. I tend to strip with my fingers and just pinch it. See that? It comes off nicely. Uh, I try to avoid cutters, this smaller stuff, because all you're going to end up doing is um, losing some of those strands. If you've got a set of wire cutters, sure. Proper wire cutters. Side cutters are not wire cutters. Right, eh? So, we want to select an appropriately sized bit of heat shrink. Yeah, that's cool. So, I'm going to want three of those. And they don't need to be that long. So, I'm going to pretty much cut them in half. I've got, I know I've got four, but yeah, I'll use the other one on the second second servo I do. Right, eh? so we just choose a wire colour, make sure you put your heat shrink on. And like I did before, I'm not going to do that. I'm not just going to twist the two ends together. I will twist them a little bit so that they become more of a single wire than the strands that are going everywhere. Now 
And then what I want to do is I want to just kind of overlap them and wind them together. Now, they're nicely wound together, so I just need to give them a little bit of heat from the soldering iron. And then just hit them up with a bit of solder. And that's done. What you want to be careful of is not to melt the um, sheath of the wire too much as well. Um, yeah. Then I can just slide my heat shrink over. I do have a heat gun, but I'm not going to use it today. I'll just use my soldering iron. Make sure it's kind of clean. Because the last thing you want is to be depositing. There you go. Is to be depositing a whole stack of molten metal on that either. Make sure it shrinks right down. You can see there I've dropped a little bit of metal on there, a little bit of molten metal, but that's all right, it'll come off. Righto, so that's one done. Let's get that metal off. Righto, let's move on to the next one. So, same again, it does get a little bit trickier because now you've got one in the way. So, we just wind those together so they're more of a single strand. Same on this end. Make sure you put your heat shrink on, otherwise you'll be really disappointed. And then we just want to cross them over a bit like an X. Don't know if you can see that very well. I got my glasses on, I can hardly even see it. <laughs> Righto, so that's to wound together, it's not going anywhere. Give my soldering iron a little bit of a tap just to get the other rubbish off it. Just give it a little bit of a heat up and then let's just get a little bit of that solder in there. Don't need a lot. Never blow on solder by the way. I don't remember why. You can Google if you want, but yeah, I was told by Bill Fulton, who uh, taught me to solder a long time ago, and Barry Ashton. Don't blow on your solder. Uh, I think what it does is it um, it can cause almost like little fractures in it because it's not it's not cooling down properly. It's similar to ABS. If anyone's printing with ABS on your 3D printer, uh, if it if it cools too quick, it causes problems. Right, oh, that one's done. So I'm just gonna clean those little bits of metal off. Might just give them a soldering iron a quick wipe down. You'd be surprised how quickly it builds up junk on it. Right, oh, on to the next one. We're on the home straight for this fella. Just wind that together. You notice how I'm kind of pushing that down so I can get them closer together to start with. That, um, can kind of help sometimes, gets them out of the way a little bit too. So I wind them together so that they hold uh, up until the point I can solder it and that one's not awesome. Don't worry, I've got to have a couple of goes at it. That happens to all of us. Righto. I'll get a funny angle on this one for this, but it'll work. So, a bit of heat. And I'm trying to... Oh, guess what I did? <laughs> oh, Muppet Man. Righto, now I've got to take this apart. I forgot my... heat trick. Yeah, doesn't matter if it happens. So, this is probably a good little point. They're now, they've now got solder on them. They won't quite bend as easy, um, but you can almost, you can almost just wind them together now. Just make sure the ends are down properly. 
You know, I'm sticking it up in the air. I could almost just touch that and let the solder melt and melt together, but I will add like a touch more in there just to be sure. Always be uh, aware of where your soldering iron is. Try and have a fairly clean workspace. Um, a couple of times um, I've actually melted holes in models because, yeah, I was just not being very spatially aware. Um, sometimes you can't avoid, but to be, you know, if, if something's already in a model and you're trying to fix something or extend something or do whatever, um, sometimes it's you're going to be close to it. Um, there are some things you can do. Something I do quite often is if I'm working on something that's internal, I'll get a piece of paper, I'll put a tear in it, and whatever I'm soldering, I'll pull it through like that so that the soldering iron can't touch, you know, whatever it is, foam, whatever, and damage it. Um, paper's not going to do a lot. You know, if the soldering iron, if you rest the soldering iron on the paper and the foam straight underneath it, sure, it's going to melt it. But, you know, if you've got some blobs of solder that are dropping onto it, the paper will stop them. So. And, uh, yeah, just make sure that when you do your heat shrink that it's in the right spot. You want it pretty much central over um, where the gap was and often you can see the difference when you melt it down they'll either there'll be like a thick spot in the middle where they join depending on the thickness of the wire or it might actually drop in a little bit right so that's one server done I'm sure you don't want to see me do another one um, so I'll do that and then I'll get back onto uh, the A10 so, yeah, it's coming along nicely. Um, might be only, I'll probably tack the wing, yeah, joining the wings and putting the servers in on the end of this. Anyway, stay tuned.